Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering an SBOM tool called Cyclone DX CLI. This is a command line interface tool that generates, converts, and consumes SBOMs. So just as a little background, I installed Cyclone DX CLI on a Windows 10 VM. It can also run on Linux OS and does not require any prerequisites. This program allows for a couple of different functions. I'm only going to cover four today, but if you look on there, GitHub and read through the documentation, you can see some other functionality that this program has. First, I'm going to be covering the creation of SBOMs. They have a example command on their website, and I'm going to change it slightly and tell you some of my experience when trying out this command. So first of all, um, you obviously have to call the function and then the option add and then files is the option that creates a new SBOM. Since we are creating it from scratch without an input file, we are just going to do no input. So we use this when you don't want to append this SBOM to a current SBOM that already exists. I'm going to specify the output format. You don't need to do this because you're going to specify an output file with an extension anyway, but I'd like it just to make sure that nothing goes wrong. And then I'm going to specify a base path. This isn't a requirement, but through my testing it is. The program seems to crash and thinks that we are located in just the C directory instead of the actual path that I'm in. So I would keep that in mind. If you don't include the base path and you get an error that looks like it's reading, it's looking through the C directory for files, then that's what's happening and I would just include the base path. I'm now including the output file, which is the, the SBOM file that we want to create. Make sure that this JSON extension is the same as the output format. So if you're doing XML, make sure it's .xml and not .json. And then finally, I am going to create an SBOM with a Git repository in it, and we don't want any information on the Git repository itself. So I am going to exclude the .git repository and everything inside of it. Make sure that this exclude option is the very last thing you put in. If you don't, it will again crash, and that is bad news. So if we run this, it should go through all the files and add it to the SBOM. And then we can check out what the SBOM looks like. Okay, so if we list the directory, we can see that sbom.json was in fact created. And if we check out what that looks like, we can just analyze it for a quick second before moving on. So bomb format, Cyclone DX, it is the latest version as of recording this. Um, it creates a serial number and adds the timestamp. It also informs the user, anyone that looking at this, that it was created with Cyclone DX CLI. So something I noticed when looking through all the components is that it only specifies the type as file and not as anything else, which is a bit of an issue because not everything in this is a file. If we search up library, there is no information at all of any library that is used, uh, which is just incorrect. And it only includes the version number and the hashes of each component, which generally can be used, um, but it doesn't compare to other SBOM generators that add a bunch more information and is easier to consume with a SBOM manager. So I'm a little disappointed that it doesn't have more specific information on each component, but that is something to take into account. If you only need the hash values, this is a pretty lightweight, good way of doing that. But there is very few use cases in order to actually use the SBOM generation that Cyclone DX CLI provides. So the next tool we're going to look at is more of what it's known for. It's converting from one extension to another. So JSON to XML and whatnot. So if we call the file again and then we do the convert command if we specify the input file which is just the sbom that we created and then the output file and then this is just any file that you want to be named the output it cannot already exist so it does have to be a new file so if we just name it convert.xml 
we should see that a new file gets created, convert.xml, and that went off without a hitch. So if we go and compare the two side by side, so again, it just says vendor is Cyclone DX. It was created with Cyclone DX CLI. It has the timestamp um, and everything pretty much the same. If we look at each component, we can see that they're still all named file. If we look up library, still doesn't exist. It has the same hashes, same version number. It looks like everything's the same, but obviously we're not gonna look through 30,000 lines of information to see if anything's the same. So how do we maybe know what's going on? That's where the diff command comes in. Using this, we'll be able to compare two files and they do not have to be of the same format, which is very helpful. So if we do the sbomb.json and the convert.xml files, we should be able to see what the difference is between them, if there is one at all. We're hoping that there isn't one because then the convert would be lossless. Unfortunately for the diff command, it does require the component versions option, which is just uh, listing the component versions that have changed. If we don't include that, it doesn't compare anything, which is a little bit disappointing. I don't know why they have only one option. If we look at the information here, we can see that it only has one differentiating option. So I don't know why they would include it if there's only one option to have. But as you can see, the two versions, the one that we made and then converted to, are the exact same, which is what is supposed to happen. If we convert the one we created with, let's say, a Python SMOM, and this is not that one, so they are should be different, we should see a bunch of differences. So as you can see, there are a ton of different components, which is a good sign. We wanted to see something different. And if you remember before, I talked about how the creation of the SBOM isn't really that good. We can kind of show this by doing the diff command again with the SBOM that we created and then with a better generated SBOM of the exact same program. And as you can see, there are a ton of differences between the two, which makes the SBOM creation command not really that helpful in most circumstances. But I did want to include it because that is an option. But again, it's only really useful for finding the hash values of each component, which can be used in turn to search up through a VEX or some vulnerability database. And you can search for that hash in the database. So it is still useful, um, but in many fewer use cases than what would be appreciated. The final command I'm gonna to showcase today is the analyze command. This is somewhat similar to the diff command in that it just lists the component versions that are being used. So I just have the analyze command and then I'm specifying the input file we're doing the SBOM that we created. And then if we just hit enter, we can see there are two values for the result, which is the serial number and the timestamp the SBOM was generated. This isn't really that helpful. It could be useful just to verify that the SBOM was created when you think it should be in case an attacker might have gotten in and tried to change that value. But a probably more useful option is to add the multiple component versions. This just lists any components that are running with multiple versions. So it includes the serial number and timestamp, just like the normal analyze function, and then also includes components with multiple versions. In our case, it's none, but it, this is a really helpful development tool to um, just to ensure that you aren't running multiple 
versions of the same program because one of them would have to be outdated and could therefore lead to a security incident. Overall, I think the component is pretty in the middle ground. The fact that it's pretty easy to install and requires little overhead is very helpful. When creating SBOMs, there's very slim use cases for it, but at least you have the option to use that if you need it. Converting SBOMs, it's probably its main purpose. You can convert from different Cyclone DX extensions to another, so JSON to XML, etc. And that could be very helpful if you have a manager that only takes in a certain format, or you want to have a centralized repository of SBOMs in all the same format. This makes it very easy to change from one extension to another. The diff command and analyze command both leave something to be desired. They both only have one option that changes the output. The diff command doesn't even report anything unless the only option is specified. And then the analyze command can be useful, but has, again, very little use cases. So overall, Cyclone DX CLI is easy to set up and use, but it does lack in-depth options to consume SBOMs in a meaningful way. There are a few use cases where this would be very helpful, but I don't think it's useful for everyday use. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for checking out this video. If you really liked it, be sure to check out our other videos right here, and then you can also subscribe right up top here. And again, thank you. Bye-bye.